is the queen of radio. Paku Loka has arrived on Paul Santisi Music Mastermind Radio. Hello, everybody. Of course, as you guys know, I am your host, Ms. Patu Loka, and I am so thrilled and so excited that I have finally found ABC's very own ABC of Attraction, JT Tran. And um, what excites me so much is that you have no idea that I've had countless of women, for those of you guys who follow me on Google Hangouts, on um on SCBN Network, on all these other things I've done when doing television and doing ra um, internet, radio, and TV, that um, I've always had a lot of women for the BM, well, from black women, Asian men, or Asian men, black women, like A and BW, that have always had a handful of Asian guys that they were like, I would love to have you talk to this person. And you were number one, besides all the guys that I were able to complete onto the Asian men talk panel. You know, so even though girls, I could not have him on the panel with all the guys, which is, you know, but at least we have him all to ourselves. So that is perfect. Now, for those of you guys who may wow. not know. Oh, yes. For those of you guys who may not know about this wonderful guy, this wonderful individual, he happens to be what they call the Asian, what, what I call the Asian sensation. Um, I call well actually I call you the Asian 007 and <laughs> the reason I call you the Asian 007 because you wear like the most crisp hot suits and you always I look like, yeah and then because you're a master of helping people to be able to um, navigate and accomplish their goals or closest to their goals that, th that they can with what they have that's why I'm like oh he's MacGyver he's nope he's 007 007 JT is what I call you. <laughs> How are you doing? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, I'm very happy to talk about a very rarefied subject, not only just the Asian masculine identity, but romance when it comes to Asian men and beautiful black women. So thank you for having me. No, I. you have no idea. I am so thrilled because a lot of girls are going to be like, oh my goodness, oh my God. They're going to be so excited. <laughs> I'm sure I'm like I'm very excited. Um now, one thing for a lot for a lot of people who may not know, I have you've have been on Nightline. Mm -hmm. And not only have you been on Nightline, you have been on countless magazines and everything like that, mainly because uh, of your the ABC of Attraction. So, yes. do you mind breaking down what ABCs of Attraction is? Well, the ABC of Attraction stands for both my company and the system, uh, the foundation that we teach our students. So I like to refer to it as a holistic system in the fact that it addresses different areas of what we call quote-unquote game. So there is our inner thoughts, um, our outer actions, like your body language, and then what we actually say. So put, to put in, um, pick up parlance that's our inner game, our outer game, and our verbal game. And so the ABCs of Attraction, it's simply an acronym, which stands for A, B, C, D, E, F. And A, for example, is attitude. Your mental attitude before you even talk to, girl, to the girl, because as Sun Tzu said, the battle is lost, um, you know, before it's even fought. So what are you thinking? Are you already kind of nervous? Are you, are you, you have a kind of a negative attitude? Are you like, put women down, or do you put women on a pedestal? Like, what are you thinking before you even talk to her? And then the other A, because each letter stands for, like, three different components, is attract. Because attraction happens before you even open your mouth. You know, your walk, your talk, you know, how you move, how you look, your quote-unquote swag, right? Mm -hmm. And then finally, the actual approach, what you say when you talk to the girl, right? So even before we teach them how to talk to girls, we teach them all this other stuff, like how to kind of correct the limiting beliefs inside their brain and then how they should move and present themselves physically to out of confidence. And then finally we get to the talking. And so there are those six letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, and even the, my most foggiest Asian student who can barely speak English, so that they will still know their ABCs. Um, and <laughs> each, each letter has three components. And so that way I am teaching my students a very well-rounded methodology so that every 
everybody can learn it and because I can't assume that every student is coming in at the same level as everyone else because I teach a, a wide array of Asian characters whether they're born here in America and six foot tall and good looking Asian Americans or they're some foggy Asian guy from China who can barely speak English so I have to give them like a proper foundation of interpersonal communication so that's what the ABCs is and it came about when I had uh, this blog called the Asian Playboy blog and it gained this following until one day this Chinese Canadian mother called me up to help out her son who's like 18 years old who had been harassed by neo-Nazis throughout high school and oh, so she wow. wanted me to help out her son to socialize and like I felt it was such a huge responsibility um, and I told her, ma'am, for three days and three nights, I'm going to be the big brother you never had. So that's how I came up with the ABCs. Now, so far, um, I've seen you on Nightline and a lot of other, um, and I'm trying so hard to think of the other news report that I saw, um, where, which we're going to get into. NBC, yeah. mm -hmm. You've also been on NBC. You've also been on Weekly News, I mean, Weekly um, Magazine. And you also yeah, do write for a magazine as well. Yeah, I mean, we've written for a couple of different magazines. I've been at Al Jazeera, um, New York Magazine, LA Weekly, um, Asian Week. So I've been around. <laughs> so for you, when it started with that mom that contacted you about her son, did you ever think, fast forward to now, that you would end up te doing lectures and doing presentations nationally and events at conference at Ivy League schools like University of Chicago, which, you know, I was yeah. going to attend, but I moved to Florida. <laughs> then you have Yale, you have Harvard, you have University of Pennsylvania, and lots more. You actually do a tour. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I never thought I'd be like the Ivy League teacher, you know. I, I never thought that this would be a business because at the time, all I did was start up this blog, which is sort of like sex in the city, but for Asian men, right? Mm -hmm. It was like my gaining adventures and misadventures, because at the time, you know, this is back in 2005, where blogging was a very new platform, right? Yes. And I was just putting myself out there because no one else was. I'm pretty sure I was like one of, if not the first Asian American, like dating blog. Nowadays, you have more and more of them, but I was the first that, that put myself out there. And I would put out, like, when I had success, but I also, and this is so different from everyone else, I also put the times when I was embarrassed or rejected or humiliated, you know, and I think that really resonated with people that sort of, um, you know, here's this five for five Asian guy that is making some success, but he's facing, like, real life struggles that every other Asian guy is going through, and it just gained this following, and like I said, I never thought it'd be a business. And the only time that I thought it would be anything, anything like this was when this mom called me up and she's like, you know, I'll pay for your flight, I'll get you a hotel. And all the time I'm thinking, this is pretty awesome, I get to travel and help. And it says, and I'll pay you. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> um, so I never thought of making a business. What it was is more of a call to service. Um, because unlike other businesses and other maybe pickup artists or dating coaches that get into this, it wasn't about getting girls. It wasn't about making money. It was about helping my fellow Asian brothers fight the stereotypes and fight the racism and fight the prejudice that we have to deal with on a daily basis. So for you, you're actually considered, and actually, you are actually considered like a master, world-renowned, and everything about you, you um, they say that a lot from what I've seen about you is that you help people to be able to recognize, reclaim, repair, and deflate self-confidence and inadequate social skills often adapted by those struggles with cultural or ethnicity, like ethnic type of backgrounds or whatever, to break everything down and start rebuilding from scratch. Like, there is no nothing that you bring from the past into the new. You just, it's like a factory. You break everything apart, start from scratch which is a completely different concept from when you hear where normally they always have a concept where they break it down to rebuild you with the same old supplies. Right. <laughs> which sounds well, backwards well, when you think of it now. <laughs> well, a, a lot of it comes from the fact that 
Um, before I did pick up, I was an aerospace engineer. I was a rocket scientist, right? And one oh. of my jobs was, uh, you know, other than working in a mission control center where we flying spacecraft was, I had to um, test spacecraft and the spacecraft payload on the ground, so like payload testing. And I would have to learn the system. I'd have to learn a very complex system. Um, and the way you do that is you break it down into very discrete elements. And I would have to teach other people how to operate the spacecraft. And so what I learned is my official title was spacecraft systems engineer was taking a very complex topic, whether it's, <laughs> whether it's you know, a, a rocket or, or a satellite or, you know, in this case, romance, and making it so that people can understand. So I was able to sort of cross-pollinate that skill from one area uh, into another. And so what I did was I simply reverse engineered um, what I had studied, what I'd seen in real life, the kind of empirical evidence and as well as anecdotal evidence. But beyond that is when I learned to teach these engineers, I was teaching very different kinds of engineers, from old ones to, to young ones, from whites to, to black, you know, men and women. And one of the things, these things that I realized, and I don't think anyone who's a teacher who has taught can, can commiserate with this, students learn in different ways. There, there are different channels and mediums that, that students can absorb information, and not every student is built the same. And so not only did I learn how to teach, but I also learned how to teach different students. So again, with my Asian students, a lot of them don't speak English. Mm-hmm. And I'm Asian American, so I can't simply be like, okay, I'm going to teach him like I would have liked to be taught. Because that's different, because he thinks in Eng- he doesn't think in English. So I have to kind of take a very universal and holistic approach, as opposed to simply assuming just because I'm Asian and he's Asian that what I learned and how I learned is the same for him. I have to take each individual student and, and sort of customize to what works for him. And I have to do that during an entire program with like multiple students. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's something that I've learned to do um, because Asians, we're all different. Yeah. <laughs> all people are really, the Asians so are different, different, you know, all one monolithic group. We're very different, whether we're born here or overseas, or Chinese or Vietnamese. I don't know. Like, to me, what what I find so astounding is that for a lot of, um, not only Asians, but since this is, since you happen to be what I call Asian James Bond, well, a, um, Asian trans Bond, um, <laughs> because you're like the 007, what shocked me so much and what made me push on to having an all Asian men talk panel. A lot of people just assume Chinese, and I'm like, no. Asian is a national is an ethnicity, but you have Thai, you have Ch- Japanese, you have so many varieties. It's not the same thing. It's like, even yeah, though and not at all. Different, yeah, and there's different religions amongst the, the Asian um, nationality cultures. I understand makes it very confusing for for women who are like Asians. Because the way you would treat a Thai person might be different than the way you treat a Japanese person. Mm-hmm. You got your East Asian, you got the South East Asians, and then you got your 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 South Asians, like your Indians and Pakistanis. So we do encompass a lot of different cultures, and there's a richness to it. But I also understand it makes it hard for girls sometimes. So I, I can commiserate. See, my number one tip to women when they're dating outside of their race, especially with someone who comes from a different um, background that is non-American or their parents come from a different background that it's non-American, like they're from another country. I always tell them the first thing you need to do is educate yourself about their culture. Because once you know their culture or you educate yourself, whether the kid, whether the person you're involved in, whether they're into it or not, when the time comes and you meet their family members, they appreciate it so much because trust me, they do their homework. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, like a little while back, I put out this video with uh, this other female coach friend of mine, this etiquette coach, and we talked about, you know, how to meet and date higher quality women, because ultimately that's what my clients want, is a high quality woman. And I talked about how, you know, we want to meet someone that speaks, you know, maybe more than one language, has a passport, mm-hmm. well traveled. And the funny response was, I got so much, like, hate from certain groups of, I won't identify which group, but certain groups of women that are like, oh, I need to speak, you know, 
different languages and have a passport. Oh, you're so howdy towdy. But uh, I don't think they realize, and these are girls that are supposedly like like Asians, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you realize that over 66% of Asian Americans, we speak more than one language. Over half of us have passports and over half of us have been to more than one country. Like, if you want to be part of our our world, I mean, if you want us to be, we're already Asians, or we're already part of your wall. And, and, and as an African American woman, you already understand that you're part of the white world, whether you want to or not, right? Yes. So uh, it's just a little stuff for her to come and step into my world because I already know what it's like and how to operate in a, in a white society or whatever society, you know. And it, it it shouldn't take a little bit of effort on your part to at least make the attempt to learn about my world, you know. Not saying you should learn the language, but they make the attempt whether you're white or you're black, you're Latina, you know, because as Asians, again, like you know, as a minority yourself, you have to operate in the mainstream society, and so you have to understand all those cultural norms of, of a different like race, race in the state of life, right? Mm -hmm. So it's you know, it, it, like you're like you said, um, your tip, making that effort is is very important because um, it shows that you're open to it and that you don't expect us, the Asian guy, to do all the kind of the cultural work. Mm -hmm. um, not that you shouldn't hold him to that, you know. I, I think you should also educate him to whatever culture that you are a part of. But, you know, as, as an Asian minority, we're kind of used to, like, the media and the mainstream kind of um, turning us invisible. Yeah. Right? So when you recognize that and you respect it, I think that goes a long way. You know, the crazy thing for me, personally speaking, dating-wise, anytime I dated a guy, regardless if he was Asian, Latino, whatever, there has not ever been someone I've dated where either they were from the country themselves and came here in their 20s or, like, you know, basically coming out of high school, going to college, or they were just like me, where their parents came from overseas. Even though they lived in America, when you go into, when you are welcome into the home, there's nothing American about the home. Like if it's a Dominican home, it's everything Dominican. If it's an Asian home, it's just all just Asian like that. And there's not been a guy that have not dated that didn't do his homework. And it always made me appreciate it. And it always made my parents like them more that it was just normal because I was always raised that way that no matter whom I'm dating, I'm always making sure to make the conscious effort to find out about the history, their culture, the possibilities yeah. of religions. And yeah. the parents are like, she's really worldly. I like her. She's nice. And I'm like, whoo, whoo, yeah. extra yeah. stars for me. I think it, it, it helps. And it helps you win points with the parents and the family. Um, and, you know, I think because as Asians, I, I, you know, not that I'm completely understanding of the entire kind of like culture of, of one group or the other, but... You know, I, I do have some understanding of, you know, like say I've, I've dated a couple of Ethiopian girls, so I have a little bit of understanding of that. I dated white girls, I have a little understanding of like the Wasmi culture. So when a girl makes an effort to, to properly greet like your family member or even to saying hello in whatever Asian language, that goes a long way. Um, and I'll tell like other girls this, this little trick uh, is if you ever meet the, the guy's family, his parents, you know, who learn how to properly greet um, in their own language, even if hello or whatever respectful, um, you know, phrase it is, because one of the things that's always in the back of the mind of the Asian parents, you know, brain is, okay, she seems like a lovely girl, but am I going to be able to talk to my grandkids, or are my grandkids only going to be able to you know, speak English and only eat American food, and I have no way to relate to my own grandkids. You know, I don't think people realize that, but that's what Asian parents sort of think if an Asian guy is dating outside of his race. is like, you know, this girl might be great for him, but can I talk to my own grandkids? Right? So when you show the willingness to be part of her culture, it goes a long way not only for him, but also his parents and family. Now for you, personally speaking, what was your personal thought on A and B W? And for those of you listening, A and B W stands for Asian men, Black women. I think it's great. I've been in a couple. Uh, more specifically, I've dated two Ethiopian girls. Um, I definitely encourage my students to be very open about whom they date. 
because it can't simply be about just dating only Asian girls or only white girls. It's about having options with all types of women because, you know, beautiful is beautiful regardless of race. And I've had students that are, you know, I hate to say it, but they're, you know, they, they have their own race attitude. And I tell them, man, you know, just like you hate it when white people treat you with a racist attitude, like, doesn't mean that you can treat other people with a racist attitude as well. So it's definitely something that I encourage all the time with my students. Um, although, obviously, you know, the majority of girls out there, at least where we go, we're going to be like white or other. But definitely when I see a, an attractive black girl at the ball or the club or wherever, I definitely tell them that's a girl that they should introduce themselves to. Now, have you ever had any person that you were helping um, with uh, um, who attended ABC of Attraction, have you ever had one that had resistance about dating outside of their race? And once they actually did, and it actually blew up in their face that it worked out. Like they were so not like this is not gonna work. I no no no, and they just said okay, take it. I'm gonna take it, and it blew up to something that they never like blew up to a whole different level. That they're like, thank you yeah. so much. Absolutely, like one of my first clients. Um, he ended up marrying a, a black woman. Uh, he saw her at a Starbucks and went up to her, and he was like this five foot nothing Korean guy, and he had only ever been in Korea and he moved to America, and he had never really expected to date black women because he was always just kind of white or Asian, right? Because that's mm -hmm. that's his reality, and that's where he lived. And then he ended up marrying a black woman, and I think there was one time um, another Bobby he to of mine. You know, he was resistant to talking to a black woman because, again, he is from Asia and it's just not part of the reality. I tell him to talk to her and he's like, you know, he's like telling me later he was so scared, not because of the black woman, but because the bouncer was standing right by him with his big black guy. He thought, like, <laughs> the big black guy was going to beat him up because he was talking to a black woman. And he didn't beat him up, you know? Like, the black guy like, gave him a high five later and he's like, wow. Like, it's amazing like you know it wasn't as scary as i thought no one checked on me you know the black guy didn't hate on me because the uh, this attractive black girl the attractive black girl liked me so you know it opened his eyes and that's part of my job is to fight you know racism not only in the external sense of like hollywood and the media but also the internalized racist belief system that asians carry with us yes. um yeah, because whether it's because, you know, they watch Hollywood and they, they view themselves negatively or they come from the old motherland and have these outdated racist beliefs. Um, but I had to fight it on both spectrums. So for you, what was the most negative stereotype that you had to endure or had to um, fight against when helping someone? in the the um in the source of finding love or getting to the next level of whatever they want to do that was like oh what, what's the main one that's like if people could get past this they would be so much happier <laughs> um well there's so many i i'd say the universal belief seems to be that non-asian girls don't like asian guys that's not and, true and you know that's you know there's a sort of presumption that non-Asians, and whether you're white, black, um, the belief is that they actively dislike Asians because of the media. But the reality is, you know, when Asians were only like 6% of the population, most non-Asian girls have never had the opportunity to date Asians. So yes, you're going to have, you know, a minority that has, you know, sort of imbibed um, the stereotypes that they see in Hollywood and the media. But the vast majority, like, you know, over 90% of non-Asian girls, they've never even thought of dating Asians. So we're not considered, like, positive or negative in most women's eyes. And so it's our responsibility as Asian men to put her best foot forward. Like, I, I hear so many times from Asian guys, it's like, oh, if only she gave me signal that she liked Asians. Like, no, you're not supposed to wait for that. You're supposed to go and be that masculine, confident guy so that she can be attracted to you. She's not going to be attracted to a wallflower, right? So, as an Asian guy, like, you can't care about what she believes Asians to be. The only way to fight that racism is to show your personality. 
right, to, to introduce yourself, to put your best foot forward so that she can see who you are. You know, the very first um, Asian guy I ever, ever met, and he used the line, which was different because I'm so used to black guys or white guys using lines. Because, you know, guys from different countries, they don't use lines. They just say, hey, my name is this and I like you. That's it. But he said, have you ever dated an Asian? And I'm like, at that point, no. I'm like, no. He's like, would you like to have some persuasion? I was like, ah, oh, that's hot. I'm going to go on a date with you. Because <laughs> I thought it was going to be something corny. Well, that's like what I say when you go Asian. Caucasian. Once you go yellow, <laughs> no, you said once you go yellow is what? Once you go yellow, hello. No, see, those are good. Those are good because, like my grandmother said, once you uh, once you go rice, you never look twice. So only stick to people that love rice. You know, all cultures where their main diet is rice. But um, yeah. now what are your what are your attitude? What is your attitude towards other Asian guys or Asian women? who feel like, no, Asian people do not date outside their race. So this conversation that Miss P- Patu's having and Mr. Tran's having, I'm sorry, this is just stupid. This not It's non-existent. This just does not exist. Well, I, I'll run into it every now and then, um, whether it's like Asian guys or, or Asian girls. From the Asian girl perspective, I think Asian girls are, what, three times? I, I forget the exact statistic. Like three times more likely to outmarry than an Asian guy is. So yeah. that trend is already well on its way. But at the same time, there is a very real and physical uh, gender imbalance that's happening in Asia, where I think there's something like 28 million missing like Chinese women due to female infanticide. Like you know, all these you know because of the one-child policy. Yeah. So they. They um, they afforded female fetuses in lieu of like a male one, and again, this is kind of that old world misogynistic chauvinistic attitude. But it has come back to bite us in the ass, where you have millions, literally just like thirty million more Asian men than there are women. So it doesn't matter if these people have that kind of belief where Asians should only stick to Asians. There are not enough Asian women to go around anymore. <laughs> and as the Asian women that are here in America, they're very more likely to date like white guys than they are to date like Asian guys. So, you know, I think what is it? One out of five Asian American men will never get married. And part of that is due to the gender violence, and part of that is due to like how many Asian women are out married. So, yeah, there are these very real factors, um, cultural factors that, regardless of your belief systems, are pushing Asians to interracially date. It's only for the sheer simple fact that there are not enough Asian women out there anymore. Well, since we're winding down on time, for those of you guys, please don't forget any and everything dealing with Mr. JT Tran. You will find all the information in the description box down below. And you guys can always hear a re-air of this and everything of updates dealing with the ABC of Attraction, Mr. Asian Playboy himself, JT Tran. You'll find updates where you'll see hashtag JT Tran. So that's all the updates you'll find when you do that. Now, um, is there any last advice you would like to give to those Asian guys that are kind of in the in the middle where it's like, I would like to date outside my race. I'm not too sure. Those I types. I say for my Asian brethren out there that are on the fence, um, then your success is going to be a lot easier than you think. It is not as as painful as you might think it is um, because you can be a successful Asian man and you can have a successful relationship if you open yourself up. And yes, rejection is part of the reality, uh, but it is not as painful as you think it is. And there are, and I say this from not only empirical evidence, but also from the thousands of Asian women that I've caught that have gone up to meet all different types of women from white to black and the students that have dated black women and married black women, that African American women are very, very receptive to an Asian man that has the confidence to approach her. And so your likelihood of success is 
you know, the odds are in your favor, for real. Thank you so much. And trust me, guys, since there's so many of you guys out there, there's not enough women, you got, they need to spread out. Trust me, the most beautiful babies I've seen are those that are that come from different backgrounds. They're so gorgeous, especially you can imagine like a, a, an Egyptian Asian or Korean Haitian or like they're just so gorgeous, just gorgeous. Yeah, well, they, they, they interracial babies are the most gorgeous. Yeah. And trust me, guys, black women love you guys. You would be surprised how many black women are into KT and C-pop music and movies and things like you have no idea. So um, thank you so much, Mr. JT007, for in talking to us about your ABC of Attraction. And um, oh no, I'm so excited. Once I began to open up to black women or Latin women, I realized that um, dating was a little bit easier, as you could say. Well, in my experience, I mean, and I tell my students that they definitely should approach of like women of all colors, but especially black women, because they are very receptive. I know when I tell my students, they're like, what? Like they, black women are into Asian guys, but they really are. Like I myself have dated like two Ethiopian women. So I know from experience, and I know from watching my students, when they go up to a black woman, like the black women just, they light up. I mean, they, because they are so rarely approached by men of other races, but especially Asian guys. Mm -hmm. 